First look at the features of Calyx OS based on Android 11 running on the Google Pixel 2 XL. Hey peeps, what's up? Manji here, back with another video. And in this video, we're going to have a look at the features of Calyx OS, which is an Android based operating system, which puts your privacy and security into your hands. And of course, luckily I do have the Google Pixel 2 XL, which is one of the officially supported devices by Calyx OS now. When you install this for the first time, you of course do need access to a computer and you can either have Mac, Linux or Windows. They have installers for all three major operating systems. And when you're done with the installation, they do give you the option of locking your bootloader. And why is that? That is because once you lock the bootloader, you do get verified boot. Now, before you ask me, hey Manji, what is verified boot? So verified boot is something which ensures that the operating system has not been modified. So to the outside world, if you're using this device, it will look like a device which is coming from an OEM or say nothing has been changed. So the bootloader is locked, the device is encrypted out of the box and banking apps which require a verified boot device which is not rooted with a locked bootloader are going to work absolutely fine now when you watch this video you need to go in with the mindset that you are trying to reclaim your privacy and security which means you're trying to get away from the trackers of google the facebook's the apples and all of those things if that is the mindset with which you go into watching this video it will be very helpful to you because sacrifices have to be made when you have to reclaim something back which you have already lost and of course all relevant links are in the description of the video do note that this video is about the features of calyx os you might hear some terms which you have never heard so i have tried to add all the relevant links in the description of the video so that you can click on those links and get more information about the questions which pop up in your mind while you're watching this video so again humble request do read the description and check out the different links so that certain words which you might hear you do not know anything about them you will need to read about them and get more information so here it is calyx os version 2.8.0 which is the latest at the time of recording this video this of course is the pixel 2 xl and android version is 11. do note pixel 2 xl is one of the officially supported devices so this is how the rom or calyx os comes out of the box no google feed because we are trying to get away from google then as for your volume panel this is how the volume panel is going to look like press and hold on the empty space going to styles and wallpapers and you do have a few wallpapers which are baked in out of the box then we can also go back into styles and wallpapers and have a look at the styles so here it is this is how it looks like one pre-baked theme go into custom and you can choose between four different font options a few icon styles accent colors are there no system wide rgp picker and you can also change the icon shape as well give it a name and you should be good to go next up for the grid here it is you do have different options for the grid and three different options for your lock screen clocks in terms of your quick setting tiles here are the tiles which are available and you do have ambient display always on display i think would be for supported devices heads up caffeine and of course screen recorder which does let you record device audio and microphone at the same time are present with respect to your launcher this is quick step launcher out of the box and you can take a screenshot or you can swipe between the different applications no lags in the ui with respect to that the default search box on top is duck duck go and as for the power menu this is how the power menu is going to look like tap on power you get the option of power off or restart then we can go into settings so this is the settings ui let us go into network and internet 
tap on the Wi-Fi and if you go into Wi-Fi preferences herein you will notice you have the option of turning off your Wi-Fi automatically after a specified amount of time and this is a feature which is known as Wi-Fi timeout other than that you have your usage of Wi-Fi as well but if you go into VPN herein you can choose between two different VPNs which are baked into Calyx OS out of the box so first one is Calyx VPN and the other one is rise up VPN do note both of these VPNs are no logging VPNs and if you are using your device as a tethering device you can always allow clients to use the VPN from this specific device and if you go into DNS options you have automatics enabled wherein the default is Cloudflare which then falls back to Google's DNS but if you want to use Cloudflare only you have the option for that as well. Then if we go into Bluetooth or say connected devices herein again you have the feature of Bluetooth timeout wherein Bluetooth will turn off automatically after a specified amount of time. Go into apps and notification you have your normal options so let us go into see all apps and herein let us choose Calyx VPN and of course it does not require any permissions but if you go into mobile data and Wi-Fi you do have per app network isolation present. Let us go into the calendar application and permission so here it is these are the different permissions it requested and you also have the toggle to remove the permissions if the app is not used for some time with respect to conversations you do have priority conversations along with Android 11 bubbles and notification history is present once you enable that along with the option of hiding the silent notifications in your status bar blinking the light again some of these might be device specific and swipe down on fingerprint for notifications all those options are present default apps yep the default browser is set as DuckDuckGo of course there is no digital assistant app the home app is Quickstep phone and messaging apps are from AOSP then we can move over to battery so you have your normal options of battery saver setting a schedule for battery saver turning it off when the battery is charged at 90 percent battery manager is present along with a toggle to enable your battery percentage and some stats about the battery next up we have display so in display you of course have your brightness levels a toggle to enable or disable the dark theme which can be scheduled at a specific time and you also have a toggle for pure black in case you do not like the grays then you have night light adaptive brightness screen timeout a toggle for auto rotate screen you can change your colors between natural boosted and saturated other than that you can change the font size the display size screen saver go into lock screen again you can add users from the lock screen you have a toggle to show the lockdown option and you also have a toggle to enable or disable your always on display again this feature will be device specific and double tap to wake lift to check the phone and wake the screen for new notifications all those options are present go into sound you can of course change the volume levels using the sliders android 11 style do not disturb which can be configured on a people app and alarm basis is present you also have a toggle to enable or disable the quick settings media player shortcut to prevent ringing wherein you can press power and volume up together to either put the phone to vibrate or into mute and then you have the toggles for all the other options which you see on your screen right now moving over to privacy so yes you do have a dashboard wherein you can see the different applications along with the permissions they have requested so if i tap on location here it is these are the two apps which have requested access to location similarly if you tap on phone here it is these are the apps which recent access to my phone application similarly go into settings here it is contacts last access at a specific time then you also have permission manager wherein you can configure the different options which you see on your screen so microphone allowed all the time as none allowed only while in use are these three applications and denied are the rest of the applications similarly you have a toggle to show the passwords when you type them for a small brief amount of time 
Next up, you have security. So in security, you have the option to show the panic button. So here it is. This is the button they're talking about panic trigger. What does this do? So you can configure in panic settings what's going to happen. So application is hidden. You have a toggle for that. Then for F droid, what do you want to do? If you tap on edit, you of course have to confirm. So let us allow this. And these are the different options which are available. So the app will be closed then you can also use destructive actions so hide f droid and reset the repositories similarly you can also add apps to be uninstalled right once you use the panic button then you also have similar configuration for other options as well so what about signal the app is hidden similarly scrambled exif what do you want to do and open keychain then you have screen lock now with respect to screen lock you have the option to scramble your pin layout in case you want to and then you can disable the quick settings on your screen lock and power button instantly locks your device fingerprint is present works absolutely fine and you have a toggle to restrict usb access as well so these are the three different options which you get with respect to restricting your usb and you know this stops people from attaching usb devices or usb cables and then trying to hack into your device other than that the rom is encrypted out of the box next up we have system so in system you have languages and input the default keyboard is from android open source project or aosp so no google keyboard go into status bar you do have your network traffic indicator which can be enabled system icons what all icons you want to see in your status bar then you have gestures so active edge again device specific swipe fingerprint for notifications quickly open the camera by pressing the power button twice works from any screen then you also have your system navigation so three different options again this might be device specific so you have three button two button and gestures and if you go into gesture settings you can change the sensitivity for the left edge and the right edge then double tap to check the phone lift to check the phone prevent ringing and power menu what all device controls do you want to see in your power menu if you have any smart devices connected to your device then of course you have your backup option now backup on this one you can use next cloud which is your online service or you can use a usb flash drive to note you have to set up a 12 character combination and that is something which you need to remember for your backups because if you do not know that then or if you do not recall that when you're trying to restore then you will have issues with that so yes online backup and backup on a usb drive are supported of course it backs up the whole device which includes your apps and application data as well then you also have micro g for those of you who want to use some of your google stuff on the device micro g is baked into the rom out of the box go into system update settings yep you do get updates monthly via OTS and installation is as easy as downloading the update and once you have downloaded the update reboot your device and you will be moved over to the next version of Calyx OS do note the advantage they have is that most official devices they support I think have a B slots so there is no downtime or the downtime is minimal as in when you're applying the update all you have to do is just reboot your device next up we can talk about the different apps which come baked into the rom so for starters the phone app is from android open source project or aosp and if you tap on the three dot menu on the top right you can access the helplines as well of course they are going to populate once you insert a sim and any helpline which you call will not be recorded in your call log but they also have the signal app baked into the rom and that is what they recommend for you to make your calls and connect with other people using messages because signal is encrypted and any calls you make from the aosp dialer will not be encrypted similarly for the messaging app also they have aosp messaging app again not encrypted so signal is recommended and in case you want to use whatsapp you can install whatsapp from the aurora store and when you try to make calls you can make calls using whatsapp as well using the 
dialer so here it is you can install apps or google play store apps using the aurora store and the best part is aurora can install apps without having a google account yes you do not have to log into your google account it will create an anonymous account or whatever it does in the background and here it is we should have successfully installed whatsapp let us go back here i forgot to click anyways so here it is you can install applications without having to sign into your google account using the aurora store so whatsapp installed successfully and here it is feel free to install and set it up those of you who want foss apps you also have the option of fdroid so yes you do have two application stores baked into the rom out of the box with respect to the vpn we already covered them but yes you do have two non-logging vpns baked in which includes the calyx vpn and the other one is the rise up vpn which is also present in this rom then those of you who do not want to you know go into settings apps and notifications you do have a firewall baked in this is the datura firewall and again you can control what all applications have access to say your background data wi-fi data mobile data vpn data and you can also choose installed apps and you can also do the same for system apps as well Next up with respect to your default browser and the default search engine. The default browser and the default search engine on this ROM is DuckDuckGo which is known to remove your ads so ad blocker out of the box and it removes trackers as well and here is an example so this is the website of Android Central which is in my opinion one of the worst android websites when it comes to showing ads in your face and have a look at the user experience pretty smooth without any ads and the best part there are no trackers then support for the tor network is baked into the rom out of the box and you have two browsers which support tor so you have the orbot browser which is present for tor and then you have the tor browser itself so both of these can be used for tor network Next up with respect to the maps application you have something called organic maps which is baked in and it works good enough of course it is not as good as your google apps but it gets the job done. Then with respect to your email accounts you do have k9 email which is baked in now do note that k9 email can be configured to use gmail and the best part is it is open pgp encryption supported so that is something to consider about wherein only the person for whom the email is intended to can read that email with open pgp encryption and while we are talking about encryption on this device you do have support for ubico keys in case you want to use hardware encryption or two-factor authentication using a hardware encrypted key you can do that on this device as well now the next question which i will get a lot is himanji what about banking apps so there are two kinds of banking apps one which require safety net and those of the apps which require safety net are not going to pass why because safety net fails me personally i could not get safety net to pass on this build in fact the error which we are getting is about safety net api error now those apps which require a verified boot device with a locked bootloader that is a device which is not rooted those banking apps will work absolutely fine and of course there are some links in the description of the video which might be helpful to you in that regard with respect to your cameras yes the only camera application baked into this rom is your camera from aosp but you can install gcam ports on this one without any issues of course if you want google photos feature you can install google photos as well but i guess the aim was to go away from google so i'm not trying to recommend you install any google trackers or applications from google which end up tracking you now with respect to some other apps which are baked in you do have the chromium browser which you can use in case you want to do note this is different from chrome then you also have a calendar management app called dav x5 next cloud you can use this for your backups and do note 
you can set up your own next cloud instance as well in case you want to do that you do have a weather application as well and you also have something called scramble xf so what is this scramble exif this lets you share photographs without the metadata so when you take a picture sometimes it captures the location the phone from which the picture was taken from all that information is known as metadata and you can remove that using this application and then share the picture without having to worry about any privacy issues so what is my personal final take on calyx os well my personal final take on calyx os is that this is something which is needed in today's world wherein our data is not secure it's not private and those of you who are ready to make some small sacrifices and give high priority to your privacy or privacy whatever they call it across the pond well this is something which is worth considering because the updates are good the ui is fluid of course some compromises have to be made but all in all a great rom and a great initiative for devices which are officially supported do note I personally recommend that if you're going to use this ROM in the long term on an officially supported device, make sure when you install it for the first time, you do lock the bootloader and there it is beeps. That was our first look at the features of Calyx OS based on Android 11 running on the Google Pixel 2 XL and that will do it for this video. Hope my video helped you. Likes, shares and subscribes are appreciated. Feedback and comment more than welcome. See you when I see you.